Today I will be doing a essay proposal for my pop culture and media course. So this essay proposal is brought to you by, I imagine you can probably figure it out. So let's get started with the presentation. So the popular Nintendo game Super Smash Brothers, known simply as Smash by its fan base, has had a significant cultural shift from casual to competitive play in turn creating a strong and devoted fan-driven community. This is shown through the fan-driven mobilization to change the rules of the game, the avatar player relationship and its relation to the reconfiguration of identity, and the strong communal dissemination of gameplay knowledge. Smash has gone through a number of iterations across four different Nintendo consoles, but the concept has remained the same. A number of different characters from Nintendo universes come together and are able to fight with each other. What was originally seen as a casual game for children has evolved into a highly competitive and skillful electronic sport. It comes in second only to StarCraft for the number of required inputs per second. And that's simply how many times you're pushing the control stick or pressing a button or hitting your keyboard, and then that's averaged across the seconds. So this cultural shift began when fans of Super Smash Bros. Melee which is the second iteration of the series on the GameCube. They wanted the game to be faster than it currently was. These gamers decided to change the rules of the game to suit their needs. The rules within the game context comprise of more than simply just the formal structures within the game. While it's true your character can only perform the prescribed moves and only jump a certain height, there is a more complex understanding of rules that needs to address social and cultural norms as well. Fans actually invented techniques the developers never intended quickly elevating the game to a different level of play. With the introduction of wave dash techniques, which is the ability to glide over the stage, which I'll show you in a second, players could have a competitive advantage. This renegotiation of the rules changed the competitive environment, and players had no choice but to learn the new way or have no chance in competing at all. So, as uh, this character here, what I can do is I can slide across the stage, move very quickly, I can uh, do it up on ledges and things. I can slide away from this guy while he's trying to attack me. I can do all sorts of things. Smash also gives the player a social platform to express themselves. Avatar player relationships can be seen as a projection of the self. Players often refer to themselves in the first person when talking about game-related objectives. And most modern games allow characters to model their own avatars. While this isn't an option in Smash, the researcher Linda Roth noticed that anxiety was produced when she observed three eight-year-old boys picking Smash characters. One boy hovered over Princess Zelda and was immediately ostracized for playing such a girly character. In this case, the avatar player identity is so intertwined that the youth felt anxiety when Zelda's feminine personality was projected onto him. He was immediately associated with those characteristics by his peers. This has served as a way for gamers to express themselves through their characters, even claiming characters for themselves. The smasher with autism Mewtwo King has branded himself as a Mewtwo player and is known as the master of that character. The smasher Ken coined the Ken combo, which can be performed as the character Marth. He has also inserted his name into the game and branded himself as a Smash celebrity. This blending of avatar and self has become deeply rooted in the Smash community, and players will often only focus on playing one or two characters. That character becomes who they are in the Smash scene which is deepened even further by the use of gamer tags to identify themselves, such as Mewtwo Kings. The new Smash game boasts 54 characters with the downloadable content, allowing a lot of freedom in who you choose to represent you on the battlefield. Smash is unique compared to more traditional board games and card games and even other video games, as it's very difficult to keep secrets. The only way for someone to never know that you invented a new move would be to never use that move. The Smash community has thousands and thousands of hours of archived footage, often hosted through services like Twitch and YouTube. Fans have access to these videos and can watch the professionals play and then learn their moves. There are a number of dedicated wiki pages that outline advanced techniques and even track game updates, and it shows how those change the characters and their abilities. It's simple for a novice to learn how to play the game well if they are willing to put the time in and make the commitment. This makes the community incredibly accessible and inclusive. The community is excellent at disseminating information to its members, and this results in a strong knowledge-sharing culture. This culture, in turn, strengthens the sense of community that exists between Smash players. 
Thank you for watching this essay proposal. I hope it helped provoke some thoughts and help inform you about the growing eSport of Smash. Keep an eye on your Dropbox on November 29th for the finished product. Until then, I'm Andrew Henderson, and you stay classy, Branford.